So I'm going to be replacing the clutch master cylinder on a 2007 Honda Civic Si. It's the four door. Shouldn't matter. Parts should all be the same. Watch a lot of videos. Got some good advice from others. Figured I would do a video. Never done one of these before. My Civic has 242,000 miles on it. And the clutch master cylinder finally gave out. Inside the car, you can see up underneath the dash on the shaft of the clutch master cylinder. Here's the replacement part. This shaft here has a bunch of white looking grease, which I don't believe is from the factory. What happened was I got home one day and hopped in the car about an hour and a half later and the clutch was super stiff for no reason. Apparently, clutch master cylinders go out. It's what I read on some forms and went and ordered a factory part just to make sure that this is a one-time job. All right, so I'm gonna get into this and give you steps on how I do it, referencing what others have done. Apparently, once you get back in this area here, you can't see it because I got my intake here, but the clutch master cylinder is down there in the corner, extremely hard to get out. And I'll be doing what I can to document this so you can see how it goes. So with the intake system out, there is a considerable amount of more room. I'm going to try to get in here to show you where that clutch master cylinder is. And unfortunately, without my drop light, you can't really see it, but it's right back there. Um, yeah, it's extremely hard to see, but let me show you what it looks like on the clutch master cylinder shaft. I'm not sure how this will look. One second here. But yeah, it's a little gummed up for some reason. And I can only imagine that something went defective there with the seals, which caused the issue. Here's the mileage. So you can see that. Started this project right around 1040. So I'll kinda try and get an estimate of how long it actually takes me to get it done. So I'm draining the reservoir of the brake fluid, just using a rag paper towel here, shop towel, to get the brake fluid out. I'm also trying to think what's going to be my best option on getting that CMC out. And I'm thinking if I remove this bracket right here, get rid of this, which will free up this cable here, it will give me a little bit more room when I'm getting this uh, brake line or clutch line out. Also, I had a send a friend a message this packet of grease came with um, the clutch master cylinder and it says uh, dust cap dust cover or caliper cap of master cylinder now I'm not exactly sure if they're same for the grease on here or not but I reached out to a co-worker who used to work for Honda to see if I can get an answer once I find out I'll let you know so to get this wiring harness off, you're going to lift up on this tab right there and just slide off like that. I already removed the two bolts that hold this bracket on. Should be able to just pop off and grab a hammer here. Heard back from 
my coworker. Apparently this red grease here, you put right there on the shaft of the new clutch master cylinder. Just put some on here like this, and then that's it. What purpose it serves, not 100% sure, but that's all you do. Once I get this off, I'll let you know my next step. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I already pulled this way from the reservoir so I can pull the holes off. I also bought this kit, it's kind of a do-it-yourself bleed o -matic. It helps you get the air bubbles out by doing it yourself, uh, not having somebody else with you if you don't have anyone else that can uh, come over and assist. Essentially, you're gonna put a little bit of the brake fluid in here, and I'll get to that later on, on how it works. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this to catch the fluid inside this hose and let it drip down over here and then move this out of the way. And then I'm gonna to get to the brake line right down there, put some penetrating pen grease on it. I'm gonna unscrew that. There's a line right there. right here and it goes up and over to clutch master cylinder there should give me enough room to pull it out and work on it so that's the next step I'm doing this line loosen up the fitting down here and then I'll show you my next step. Well, it looks like I had to take the battery out. I was hoping to get around doing that. Simple fact of not putting the code for uh, the radio. But it looks like I'm going to have to also. This brake line that goes to the clutch uh, of the slave cylinder, I loosened it up to give me some more room wasn't enough but I did notice that down here on the slave cylinder I'll show you you can see it moving the, where it gets attached to the slave cylinder it moves and I was trying to tighten that up but there's not enough room with part of the intake the old system still in the car so I'm gonna have to remove this so I can get to that slave cylinder to tighten that up and then I'll probably just leave it out but I gotta work on a few things down here to get that out which will then give me access better access to uh, that uh, where I need to unscrew it right down there so I got that part of the intake the old intake out and I have better access to this. Tighten it up just a little bit. Still a little loose. I'll uh, address it here again in a second, but should have better access. To that guy right down there. I'm trying to be as steady as possible with the phone just so it doesn't look so bad when you're trying to view it but with the battery out and that old intake that piece there you do have a significant amount of more room in the area so far this is how much old brake fluid clutch fluid has came out of that hose from the reservoir and now once I get this line unbolted 
I'll go inside the car into the cab, unbolt the two bolts for the clutch master cylinder so I can then pull it out from back behind there. I'll try to film it the best I can. I don't have no stand or anything like that, so I'll try to do a real time of actually removing it so you can have an idea. So here's that wrench that I picked up. As you can see, the difference is one is a little more boxed in. And what that allows you to do is really get around that bolt there so you can grip it from multiple corners compared to just two sides. And the issue I was having was it was starting to round those corners off a little bit with the regular one. So I went and replaced, or <clears throat> I don't want to replace any lines. So I got this tool here. Something I don't have in my inventory to replace it or to get it off. Also, here's that <clears throat> line that I'm going to put from the I'm gonna leave it outside to warm up. But Let's see if I can get the light down here. The bleeder valve right down there. I'm gonna use that line to connect to that and bring it right here. And I can just sit in the car. And uh, bleed the line from any air so that I can see it, obviously, right through the window until it's done, and then I'll just cap it off. So, I'm removing the battery tray here because, again, there's still not enough room for that bracket. So now that the battery tray is gone, it should have a lot more room. As you can see, there's a lot more room. I'm still struggling to get that off. It's not as easy as one would hope but once i get that off i'll show you what's going on next so i finally busted it free had to get some more leverage on here but you can already see some of the brake or the brake fluid leaking out of there there we go And I'm going to put a rubber glove oh. down here to catch that brake fluid so that it doesn't drip all over the car. Next, I'm going to go inside underneath <clears throat> the driver's seat. Yeah. All right, so I want to show you something here. This light underneath the steering wheel is this shroud here. You got to remove that for some room. Getting the bolt on the right side of the clutch master cylinder was really easy. <clears throat> However, I had to take the side panel off, which goes next to your footrest. Inside here, I'll try to show you. I don't know if your car's gonna have it or not. I'm thinking it's my car, but. 
have a vertigo. I have this speaker box that's in the way of the other bolt and it's either for the hands-free system that was put in from my friend since I bought the car from him um, or it's for something else and I'm not sure if your car is going to have that or not but that thing's in the way and it's causing a bit of an issue that's why I had to pull the side panel over here off so I'll get back to you once I get it out so I want to show you something here. Here's a little pin and a retaining bolt here that this pin goes through here. But as you can see, this is what it looks like in the car. And you have to Hold on a second. Trying to get you a good view of that. You gotta get this pin here up and over because it kind of locks in the hole. I'm doing the best I can get it out so that's what that looks like so that's what's underneath on the pedal to get this free you gotta take that one piece and move it over so I can pull it out all right so just to recap what you need to do to get to the clutch master cylinder to the point of removing it You need that shroud removed. That's on the exterior of the car. You need the metal brace removed. Your intake. Battery tray. The battery. If you have an intake system on your car and you left any portion of it on there, remove that. Make sure the whole area is clean. All those components removed. All right, so I'm kind of just walking myself through it so I know exactly what I have to do to start pulling it out. It's ready to go. I got my phone set up the best I could so you could see as much as possible, but it's ready to be pulled out of there. If you can see where my hand's at, this is where it's at. Generally, next to a little for room, just pulling it out. Oh, there's a clip down here that's holding the line secure. Make sure I don't bend the line as I take this out. I know the light's in the way, but <clears throat> let me get this line off this clip here so I can...
There we go. Holy cow. Really Honda. Mass wiring harness. That's in the way. Sing back in there once I get it out. The brake master cylinder is in the way. It'd be nice if I can get that out of the way, but you can't. Almost got it. That's wiring harness. Painted, but but uh, looks like we got it. I can't remember how to put it back in. There you go. Wow. So. There's the old part. And you see that moves also. So a little clip there you gotta pull out to get the, this line out. I'm gonna get the other one and assemble it. I'll be back. So we got the new rubber line
put on and now just taking this part off Yes, I can. <clears throat> the way it was. That's it. goes right inside. Back in, there you go. All right, next thing to do is install it. So getting that clutch master cylinder back in, up and around, back up in that area. Back there, well, I can't really see it. Um, it was a lot easier than expected. So I just put the line back on, put on a clip to where it needs to go, and just using this regular wrench here to get it snug before I tighten it down. I also covered up, while it was off, covered up the area just so no debris gets in that line. Now, Pretty much assembly of everything. I got to put the pins back in on the brake paddle, and then I'll start bleeding it. Kind of showing you how that works. So I did want to show you something here. Right before we put these pins in, and before we put it in this grease, don't forget about that. I'm trying to get the some weight on here. Show you. Bear with me. Hold on. There you go. You see that? The difference in those? Make sure that flange is on the left side because that's where that pin goes in when it goes up in here. Okay, so far all the nuts and bolts that we've been dealing with have been 10 and 12. This one over here is eight. And I'm just loosening it up just a little bit. There you go, focus in. The bleeder. And now I'm gonna put the hose on. Show so you got five feet and I believe this is nine millimeter I had it out in the Sun for a while just to soften it up I put that ratchet back on it and that way I can tighten it up once I'm all done before I pull the hose off I'll try to show you exactly what I'm gonna do here Not a lot of room, but I 
Just like that. And then oops. This is going to run right to there. And then you'll see the fluid going through, all the air going through, and once it's solid and there's no more air going through then all the air has been bled out of the system. My hose that goes here is a little short now, so I gotta go back into here. And... Put it over the top of the metal line. Just give me enough to reattach it right there. So, just a little heads up that rubber hose needs to be on top. All right, well, I see some fluid right there. You can see a little bit there. I'm just waiting for it to then creep all the way up to this area here. Uh, it's starting to work a little bit. It could be time consuming, so I'm just gonna cut it out and get back to you after it starts. So, It's still coming. Well, you fast forward over that. There's the fluid right there. Still working on it. You can see. So I'm pumping that clutch pedal, and you can see there's fluid coming up, and I'm noticing there's a empty spot right there. And I was expecting the fluid to come all the way up and around back in here, but it hasn't yet. What it's doing, from my understanding here, is all the air is going through here first, coming into here. This was starting to suck up some brake fluid, but I pulled it out, let it drain out. I've had to fill that up a couple times already. I'll show you the end result here as soon as I get to it. So I just want to make note of something. Inside the car, I'm just using my hand down below to do the pumping of the clutch pedal. It's just easier and quicker. But it did all of a sudden start to get stiff. It came back out and the fluid in here was almost all gone. So keep that in mind. You don't want to air to get back in here and then go through the whole system have to do it all over again. So I just did a couple more pumps of the pedal and I was standing outside the car looking over watching and you can see the fluid here itself go down a lot more. It's, it's way down where it needs to be filled again. But as you can see there's those air bubbles coming up through the whole line itself. So, uh, not much experience with doing it this way other than uh, uh, getting some advice. So I'm going to pump the pedal uh, little by little, watching the reservoir, and as soon as the fluid starts coming up around here, since it's pretty dirty. I might get a container for it. I'm not quite sure yet to get rid of some of the bad stuff and get some new stuff in there since 
I'm already here, but I'll let you know what I do. Just be very diligent when doing it, taking your time and paying close attention to this, not to get air sucked back into the line. I'll try to film this so you can see. I've got a water bottle here for the old fluid to go into, but I gotta watch this. I filled it full, that was one pump right there, but you have an idea what's going on every time I push in the clutch pedal. Trying to trying to watch and uh, film at the same time. Well, you can see what it's doing. The fluid is now up and running out. So basically, I'm gonna do a couple pumps with the clutch pedal, fill it with fluid, and keep doing that until this becomes clear. Why not, you know? Well, there's the old fluid there. Should be right where I need it to be. I'll verify level but here's the line now see it's really clean all you gotta do is tighten that up right there and pull it hose off and then after that start assembling uh, the car back together well the cars all put back together got everything put back the way it should be. The question is, did it correct the issue that I was having? I'll talk about that in a second. So the car is put back together and the reason I had to or felt I needed to replace the clutch master cylinder was because after coming home last week and then hopping in the car about an hour and a half later, the clutch itself got super stiff and there's no noise from the pressure plate there is no sound from the throat bearing indicating that there is any other item other than the clutch master cylinder and I based that off of um, stuff I've read on forums also online so that led me to believe that the clutch master cylinder needed to be replaced now after taking it for a spin it's still a little stiff. Um, is it because it's a new clutch master cylinder and it has new fluid in it? I don't know. Um, I, I Only time will tell if that truly corrected the problem. The thing is, I'm looking to get a, a new vehicle. I'm going to pick up a truck. I need a truck now. And I wanted to make sure I wouldn't sell my vehicle that, you know, nothing's going to come back at me. Um, after somebody buys it. So one, you buy factory parts to make sure that it lasts. If it was the issue, it lasted for 240,000 miles. So why not, you know, spend $130 and uh, get another part that's factory. Um, is it a pain in the butt? Absolutely. Do not want to do it again. Um, it, it was it was an all-day project. I did mess about. I went to a couple different stores to get that hose. Uh, went and grabbed something to eat. Got that um, other wrench. So you could probably take off about an hour and a half. I'd say I got wrapped up right around 4.15. And uh, we had a start on a brewing here. So um, 
it, it was it was long it was a long project. Uh, I, yeah, anybody can do it. It's a pain in the butt. Hopefully, um, that does correct the issue. But hopefully, this was helpful. Um, the whole point was to obviously add to the uh, enthusiasts out there, do-it-yourselfers, who were uh, kind enough to give me uh, some pointers to get me in the right direction. Hopefully this will help further anybody else who has um, the same issue or looking to do a job themselves. All right, take care.